Hey Yarn Lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room here in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Wednesday, April the 7th, 2021 and this is episode 104, so 104. It's been a while since I caught you up on what's been going on in life and also some makes finished and works in progress. There is a few things that I've got to catch you up on so I might have to cut this video into two and splice it together so you might see me do a change of attire if it's over a few days. Uh, but I wanted to get going and start on the video recording because I am heading off to the dentist in about an hour. So I'm going to get a cleaning done and I'm not really looking forward to that. You know, I don't know who looks forward to going to the dentist and being prodded and all that sort of stuff. So <laughs> Yeah, uh, think of me in a couple of hours, or for you, it'll be seconds later because it'll be done by the time this is uploaded. So, okay, let's kick off the podcast with, I have to talk about it, it happened over the weekend, some big news. I hit a milestone, or we hit a milestone, I should say, included in that are all of the people who have subscribed to me over the journey of my YouTube channel. We hit 10,000 K and surpassed it and surpassed any of my wildest dreams that I would ever be sitting here saying these exact words. Uh, now there are a few key people to say thank you to and it's all, all inclusive of everyone who has joined me over the time of uh, the years. I think it's probably been about 18 months maybe, 16, 18 months, but also Crystal at Bag a Day has really been a shining presence and guide for myself and this channel. So I wanted to say a big, huge thank you to Crystal. What happened on Easter morning when we were uh, not at home, we were actually traveled over to Vancouver Island. Uh, some things have happened in the home environment. We've gotten new jobs and we're thinking that we need to be closer to where the job is. So we have to make a move. So on Easter morning, we we're in a cabin and uh, it was really, really cold. The furnace hadn't quite kicked in yet in the morning. So it's the under the covers kind of just keeping warm, not wanting to get out. Uh, and I get a ding on my phone that Crystal at Bagaday has posted uh, a new video. So I kind of snuck the phone under the covers with me and I started watching and it was, a, it was an unboxing. And I thought, oh, I want to see what new yarns there are. Then all of a sudden, Crystal and Eric, her husband, are starting to talk about a giveaway and commemorating the giveaway or in honor of getting to uh, a special milestone for a YouTuber out there uh, to reach 10,000. And they were talking about my channel and myself. So I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to Crystal and Crystal's family and Eric. Hi, how are you guys doing? Um, because with without the the help and support, I may not have even reached ten thousand. I don't know. Like it's it's a bit of a question mark, really. But um, it happened to surpass ten thousand, and I have a special video at the moment when I it hit the the when the clock hit or the figures hit ten thousand. I took a little video, so I want to add that right here now. We are here on a beautiful lake at our cabin, our family cabin, and uh, enjoying our Easter Sunday. So he's going to look and see if he has reached his 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. Okay, refresh. So it's 7, 17 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And thank you to Crystal and the Bod family for shouting me out just recently in their video. 9,999. So I'm just going to refresh. Oh, and I got my 10. Yay! <laughs> that was the clip that Chad and I thought we need to add this into this video because it commemorates such a perfect moment, a perfect setting, a new beginning. It, it feels so surreal still. But we wanted to add that in to this clip just to say thank you to all the people who have helped us get there and a very 
big, huge, heartfelt thank you to Crystal and her family for we had no idea that this giveaway was happening uh, and we were so surprised and thrilled in the, at the morning when we woke up and saw that video under the covers. So thank you, thank you so much. And I didn't even expect the numbers to fly up that high. We were looking occasionally at the, um, I guess our dashboard for YouTubers has like a, the um, number of people who are joining the channel and we did see it rising really quickly so thank you thank you again to all the new subscribers as well as the people who have supported me throughout the whole 16 months of this journey that I've embarked on uh, so moving right along there are a couple of other th firsts that I need to talk about so the there was a knit night that I joined it was hosted by needles at the ready hi Kevin and Ray how you doing and if you have not met Kevin and Ray from Needles at the Ready, they have a YouTube channel. I'll link them down below as well. So there were 40 people that joined on the knit night. It was about 10 evenings ago and we were together for about three, two or three hours. And uh, yeah, it was a lovely interaction and people showed their projects that they were working on. They talked about patterns that they uh, perhaps maybe had some difficulty with or they were sharing information which was awesome. Some familiar faces from YouTube channels uh, were there as well as new ones that I had, hadn't seen before. So I hope it happens again soon. An update on pottery. Well, as I mentioned in maybe three videos ago, I was getting excited for April the 7th, which was today. I was going to have my orientation training to reopen the pottery studio. And uh, we got an email about four days ago, I think uh, uh, just before Easter. And um, they had postponed it to the 21st with the pending, I guess, instruction or safeguard that they were saying we will wait to hear the advisory but we are scheduling it penciling it in for the 21st of April for training so uh, I think it might be maybe pushed further away again from that 21st date it'll probably go further into the year as well uh, just uh, because I know the trend right now the numbers in BC are going up so Let's talk about some knitting and some crochet. So I have one item here that's knitted and it's a work in progress. I did a fade test to this piece that, I'm, that I started uh, last week on. And if you're interested and keen on looking at the fade technique that I used, and the fade colors that I'm going to work through. I will link that video down below in the description box. I do talk at length about the different style of fade that I'm using and I'm holding two yarns together. So here is the piece that I'm working on. It's, I don't know whether you want to see it far back. It's probably going to be around 6.5 or 6 feet and 5 inches in length. And I think the uh, width will be around six inches in width. So kind of a shawl scarf piece that I'm working towards in a pattern. That is the right side that you're seeing. And the pattern that I'm using is the Adventuring Scarf Wrap. So I think the title of the, of the uh, pattern as well can be re uh, done to a scarf or to a wrap. It is on the, it's not on the bias, but there are parallel uh, edges where it is on a slant like this. So there are decreases and increases on either side. So you get nice little slant on each of the uh, ends. The pattern is by Amber O'Brien. It is a paid for pattern and I'll link it down in the description box. There's a little lovely blurb on the pattern that says that this pattern was inspired to use up mini skeins. So if you have an event calendar or if you have a series of mini skeins that you want to do something with, uh, then this pattern is a good suggestion on 
utilizing the 20 gram skeins in each of the repeats so you'll get a nice little stripey effect going. Uh, I also got wind of this by watching Bearded Pearl and that is a YouTube channel as well. I'll link it down below. And about four episodes back when Caleb was showcasing uh, his finished um, adventuring wrap, I think he did the larger version, that uh, I really fell in love with it. So I'm doing my own uh, fade technique using the same pattern. And the yarn that I used was a combination of over dyed yarn as well as fingering weight yarn that I bought from store. So the first one that I used at the bottom was a over dye that I did on a cashmere gold. I purchased this from Hobium. It's no longer a, uh, I guess, a, 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 br a brand sold by Hobium in this collection anymore. I have been looking for it because I absolutely love this uh, range that they used to have. And I over it in emerald and jade colors, a little bit of splashes of yellow green throughout the, throughout the, the dye up job. And I held that together with another hand dyed yarn that I cooked up in the kitchen. And I have um, an event color, uh, not an event, it's an event pack that I created to the Hunger Games and that colorway was called Arena. And this is what I have left of what I have to use to uh, in the, the, fade, the fade scarf that I'm doing right now. And then I move into uh, holding the next one, which is this color here. And that is by Estelle Yarns and it's their collection called Color Story. And it is, again, a sock weight fingering yarn. The color is called Leaf. And the final and fourth color, because I've ran out of the first one that I was talking to you about, the jade color uh, from the Cashmere Gold. This is the last color in the four series and it's called Yarnby Authentic Hand Dyed Tonal. And this is from Hobby Lobby. It's in the chestnut ember color range and it is this one here. So the whole theory in my color selection has been kind of put together and pieced together because I like the idea of spring moving into fall. So we start off with the greens and the very young spring colors it moves into more of slowly drying up leaves and autumnal colors. And then the, in the end, we have the, the brown color. So it turns into more of a, um, like a forest changing their, their colors. Uh, and I really like that, that whole color story where we have the young spring colors moving into the autumnals. And because green jade and the chestnut reddish kind of uh, brown color is at the opposite sides of the color wheel. Uh, I am talking about the the um, balance of the, the two composite colors or the two complementary colors they're called. So um, it'll have a nice balance in the end. So I'm hoping but my uh, little test swatch turned out really nicely, so I do like I do like the color blend together. Uh, the other thing that I have to showcase is a crocheted finish beanie. Oh, I'm showing you the the join side there, but this is how it turned out. It's a pattern that I followed from Crystal. It's a tutorial actually that I followed from Crystal at Bag a Day, and I'll link the tutorial to this hat down below in the description box. It's another hand dyed yarn that I over dyed from a Hobium yarn called La Mia. And it was in their 100, what was it their natural, natural wool. It's a Peruvian uh, brand yarn. And I over dyed it with turquoise and co cobalt blue. So you'll get to see these patches throughout with the cobalt blue. It was the first time that I did the herringbone stitch in crochet. 
So I loved, I loved doing that and working that up. So I'll just put it on for you so you can have a look. Make sure that I don't show you the seam. There we go. Really, really nice. I like that a lot. And that is all the finished works and the works in progress. So I have a couple of shout outs here. One is to Kate and she has a YouTube channel here and it's called Hawthorne Cottage Craft. She has uh, a coffee and with Kate segment, which I really, really like watching. So she covers things like uh, certain tools of her crafts and interchangeable needle knitting needles, which was something that I was glued at because she went into depth and it was awesome for me to learn more about uh, the interchangeable sets that uh, Kate likes. And she also covers a lot of hand dyes within her region. She's from the UK. So she has, she's UK or she's Ireland. I'm not too sure. Uh, she's up in that corner of the world and she really looks at the areas of the fiber arts in that area. So a lot of things that I don't hear about. So I'm really thrilled with uh, learning more of the world yarns as opposed to just the um, the big box stores here in North America. So uh, the other one that I is new to me, I haven't uh, seen too many of her videos, is Brenda. And Brenda has a YouTube channel called The Newbie Crocheter. Uh, I believe her journey has just begun as well. And she's looking at helping people who are also learning to crochet. I'm looking down because I'm reading the email that she sent me. She also does a lot of things that help podcasters to give them certain goodies. Like uh, if you want a subscribe plaque, it made out of wood, she supplies those as well. As well as polyamide clay. Is that what it's called? Polyamide clay uh, hooks and she can customize them if you're left or right handed and also to what colors that you like. She has supplied me with a photograph that I will try and put up here on some of the things and items that she uses. Um, the other thing that I have here to mention is somebody commented a couple of videos ago on a great sock tutorial that is out there because I'm such a newbie at sock making. I have never made or knitted or crocheted any socks, but uh, I did win a a kit, a sock kit with a pattern. And I'm not too sure whether I wanna jump into that one just yet because I did take another second look and the pattern of the sock uh, kit that I got was very, very intricate. So <laughs> I think I might need to start off with a very plain sock to just to get an idea of what I'm doing. And I got uh, I got a tip from Tara Lyles, and she commented on video 102 saying that there are great tutorials out there for new sock knitters, and it's called the Hermione's Everyday Sock. And she said that perhaps maybe take a look at the Crazy Sock Lady as well for some tips and tricks on how to begin if you have never made a sock before. <laughs> or socks, because you have two of them. Now, I think I'm gonna to have to run off because I have to get ready for my uh, cleaning, but I do have to come back and I have some happy mail to go through. Hey, so I guessed right, it is the next day. I'm sitting here with you on Thursday, April the 8th, 2021. I had my cleaning done and it was really late when I got back home, so I held off and waited till today. I wanna to jump in here real quick to showcase some of the happy mail that I received over the course of the last 12 days. One package just arrived yesterday. I've reached out to all of these wonderful people who have sent me something and they have agreed for me to talk about the the items that they included in their gifts and I'm super super stoked and thrilled. Uh, now just a side note here, you don't necess you don't have to send me any anything, uh, but I do appreciate everything that is sent to me. I, I do treasure all the crafts that I, I gifted, as well as the yarn as well. So it will go to all good use. So, okay, first box that I have here 
came from Australia, I'll try not to show any addresses there, and it was from my fiber friends, Justine and Simone. Now they are from the same state where I grew up, and I was born and I grew up in, and it's the state of Victoria. So, hi Justine and Simone, how you doing? Oh, I absolutely love this. So I'm gonna backtrack a little bit because there's a little bit of a story to this box. And Justine and Simone were in a lockdown. So the state of Victoria went into a serious lockdown when the pandemic first started. And I think it lasted for about eight weeks. There was some traveling restrictions in that, in that uh, you couldn't move around too much in the state. And when that lifted a couple months later, uh, they had their first chance to go to Bendigo Woolen Mills. Now, it is quite well known in Victoria, but not so much uh, around other parts of Australia and definitely not that well known internationally. So I wanna uh, just tell this story and give it a little bit of a, a spotlight here. So uh, they were emailing me all of their anticipated visit to the Bendigo Woolen Mills, getting super excited, telling me about what they were interested in getting and sent me some photos of them at the store with their lovely sacks of new yarn that they purchased. And uh, they were so kind and surprised me with a, uh, you know detailing that they had made a purchase for, for myself as well. So I'm so stoked. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, I got this beautiful card. Oh, there it is from them. It's uh, kangaroos hopping around. Now that's a, a lovely landscape there. I absolutely love the card. I won't read the card, but uh, Simone or Justine, whoever wrote the card, you have beautiful penmanship. I love it so much and I definitely am smiling with all of these goodies, but thank you for the sentiment about the channel as well. I appreciate that so much. Uh, the first thing that I need to show is I love this idea. If other companies would adopt maybe sending out uh, swatch samples of their yarn, that would be such a treat for people who can't travel around right now or just don't have the finances to go and visit. But Bendigo Woolen Mills puts together no affiliation here whatsoever. I am just loving all of their product and need to talk about it and share it with everyone. But um, they send out the, these cards and they have samples of all of the color choices that are, that are in their collections. So this is the cotton one. And they come in different weights so that all the details are in the um, description of the pamphlet. Check out this. This is their wool. All those colors. And you can get them in different weight sizes as well. So I think I have a few of these to show that are in here. Uh, they don't have a huge collection of different uh, ranges, I would say, like uh, in their makes, but they do have large color palettes, which is amazing, 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 amazing. Now, I'm gonna link Bendigo Mills uh, website and details down below. If you go across, I don't know when you'll be watching this, it could be later down the way in the future, uh, their conditions on uh, purchasing and, and shipping might be different, so I advise to go visit and read up on what their conditions are if it's an international sale or purchase and what they charge for shipping prices. So let's get stuck into the yarn. Oh my goodness. Okay, I have two of these in different colors. They are the same yarns, uh, but yarn bases, it's 100% wool. And this color here is called Rustic Mustard. Very appropriate for that. And this one does not have a colorway name on it, but it is uh, in a reddish, uh, I'm gonna say like almost a burgundy, but it's got some brown in it as well. But they go together very, very nicely. Uh, the care instructions for this 100% wool is to hand wash and to lay flat in the shade to dry. Uh, 
they are saying it's an eight ply, which is a DK or three weight yarn, which I agree it is a lovely three weight yarn, a light twist. There we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And what else can I tell you about this yarn? It's 200 grams in each of the balls and the label here says it's 400 meters per ball. So that's quite a number of yardage. The feel of it is a rustica wool kind of feel, but uh, I would say you would need something to wear between uh, your garment that you make with this, maybe an undershirt or uh, yeah, it may need some sort of uh, softening agent when you wash it to try and soften up all the fibers. Uh, but honestly, it's not the most rustic that I felt. It does have a little bit of stickiness to it as well. I absolutely love them. It is quite a heavy yarn too, so the twist on it, I'm gonna say is a medium twist. Absolutely love those. Thank you so much, Simone and Justine. Now, let's talk about this beauty. Justine and Simone know me so well. I just answered questions on my favorite yarn style, and this is the mal type of, uh, I guess, technique in the yarn ply that I absolutely gravitate towards. And this color is amazing. It's all these burgundies, and I'm gonna say plum, a, a wine colored hank of a ball of yarn here. Absolutely stunning. Now this one feels a little softer than the other two that I just mentioned. The label does say it's a slightly different description of the wool type and it says here pure wool new uh, new wool so it's 100% uh, pure new wool the color of this one is called bloom wine eight ply again with the same stats as the first one that I showcased and I would agree it is a DK weight yarn suggesting size of needle is four millimeters and no crochet uh, kind of suggested size, but I would say a five millimeter crochet hook would be around about the right one for it. Now, there is no instruction here on how much yardage you get, but it, it seems to be another 200 gram. Yeah, it's a 200 gram ball. So I'm gonna guess it's probably the same yardage as this one. So this was 400 meters and this one would also be 400 meters. It's just wound a little differently. This one seems to be tighter wound and this one is a looser wind in the ball. Absolutely love it. Feels a little softer than the other variety. And this one, for me, I would say I could wear this against my skin. Uh, but if you had sensitive skin, I would say perhaps maybe wear an undergarment with it or make a product that is like a hat, something that is an outer shell that goes on top of another, like maybe a t-shirt or a dress shirt. So that would work up lovely. Absolutely love this. Now, what else can I tell you about it? So all of these so far are actually made on site at the Bendigo Mills, so it's an Australian made product. <clears throat> what else did I get? Oh, I should show you, it all came in this wonderful bag too, by the way, Bendigo Willem Mills. It's a lovely canvas bag. It was filled to the brim of all of these yarns. This one here is another variety of mal that they had placed in the gift bag for me. So thank you so much, Simone and Justine. These are amazing. And again, it's a tweed, uh, not a tweed, but it's a mal type of yarn where you have different strands that are twisted together. Really soft. Again, it is as soft as the mal variety that I showed earlier. And these are 50 gram balls. 105 meters and this one here is in the colorway merino twist brown and this one here is merino twist black oh it's got a bit of fluff on there and it 
camera blew out. So these colors would probably go together in a in a hat, maybe a color color worked hat. I love those. Thank you so much. Now, the last three I have are from the same collection, it seems, and these ones are 50 gram balls as well, not giving me the yardage, but it does have probably the same amount of yardage as the previous 50 gram balls, which was 105 meters, and these are soft. These are super soft. You could make a garment out of these and have them with no undergarments required. So let's have a look. The colorway of the darker two is called claret and that is almost a black purple. Just a nice, lovely color there, very rich. Uh, and these are a wool acrylic blend. So 15 wool, 85 acrylic and you get 50 grams in a ball. This one seems to be a slightly thinner weight yarn, even though it says it's still at eight ply. Their suggested needle size are 3.75 in needle size, so slightly thinner yarn. And this one here is in the colorway Haze Opal. Again, the same uh, grade of wool and acrylic blend. The washing instructions for this is to warm machine wash and lay flat to dry in the shade. Do not tumble dry. So I think that might be because it's uh, the wool factor might peel it or shrink the yarn, uh, the, the yarn fibers. Love that. Now this one seems to be a little bit more shinier. It has more of a sheen to it. And that might be the result of perhaps the dye that does that. And an interesting thing about what I was uh, reading the other day was an article about what, why wool in garments is necessary or is more favorable than other acrylic garments that you can make. So if you're living in an environment like us here in the west coast of Canada, uh, and it's quite a humid environment where we have lots of mountains. So there's uh, a current as well that is a warm current that goes by here in the ocean, Pacific Ocean. So we get a lot of mist and a lot of uh, precipitation. So it rains a lot here. Uh, wool is the best thing to wear if you want to stay warm. So if it is dampened or it does get a little waterlogged, uh, it still keeps your body temperature warm. Also what I got from Justin and Simone was this wonderful ball of yarn. It was not purchased from the Bendigo Mill, Woolen Mills. It looks to be purchased from the Aussie Knitting Co.com and it's Murrub... I'm gonna say this wrong. Murrub Bark Wool and it is this wonderful multicolored beautiful acrylic wool blend yarn i absolutely love this and you can wear this against your skin with no undergarments required uh it's a Peyton's brand the colorway is called sierra i believe or it could be the collection that's called sierra i'm not too sure and in this ball you get 150 grams 375 meters. It is a 3 DK weight yarn and they are suggesting to use 4 millimeter knitting needles or a 4 millimeter crochet hook. The care instructions are to gentle machine wash and lay flat to, in the shade to dry. I will link this website down below as well. No affiliation again, just ease of access so that you can check out what kind of uh, stores that are out there and what their uh, I guess their inventory is so that you can see all their goodies. I have a yarn that's very similar to this and I pulled it out of my stash because as soon as I put, uh, got this from the box from, uh, from Simone and Justine I saw it looked very much like Serta's wool or Serta, the ball here of Serta. Don't you think? looks very similar 
Uh, the only difference with this one is that there is a, a 200 grams in the Serda dual spun and 150 grams in the Peyton Sierra. Now the content might be a little different as well with the with the yarn fibers, but they look very similar to me. Maybe there's not, not any of this yellowish uh, tan color throughout, but or peachy color, I'm not sure, but there seems to be a lot more colors hidden within that I can't see on face value, but that might be the little peachy going in there. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what uh, whether or not they are the same yarns when I work them up. And I also have been gifted a pattern. So both Simone and Justine said that they went to a class on how to make this with the designer. Now the designer is Kay Adol Adolfson. Adolfson. And I'm sorry if I've butchered that name, uh, Kay, but this pattern called the Cobblestone Cowl is amazing. So I will link their details to the pattern and where you can find it as well. And I cannot wait to try out the cowl because it, it uses Mal Malabrigo and I have some of that. And I've been waiting to find a perfect pattern for it. So I think the Malabrigo will go nicely into this pattern. So thank you, thank you. Uh, I have a note here that is on Ravelry and it's a paid for pattern. So awesome. It is in the UK terminology as well. Now, I thought I was all done when I lifted up that uh, canvas bag, but underneath the canvas bag were more treats and I got a Notions pouch with a design inspired by the indigenous people or the Aboriginal uh, people of Australia. And it's in this beautiful uh, stipple type design. I absolutely love it. And inside, more treats, cherry ripes. I don't know whether everyone knows what a cherry ripe is, but it's a chocolate bar that is coconut uh, dipped in dark chocolate. So it's absolutely lovely. And uh, one of the packs did not make it to this filming because me and, me and Chad consumed it. So now that the filming is done, we're totally gonna hoe into the cherry ripes. Thank you so much, Justin and Simone, you know me so well. And in the box as well, we have some tea. I'm a tea drinker as well as coffee, but uh, it is called Australian Afternoon by the Twinings uh, Tea Company. Absolutely can't wait to get into that. So those were amazing, amazing gifts. Now, I think I've done everything. If I have forgotten something in the box, I do apologize uh, because it's been sitting around. I've been pulling out the stuff and, you know, admiring it, squishing all the yarn. But uh, I absolutely love Bendigo Mills and thank you so much, Justine and Simone, for thinking of me. Now, next I have a wonderful gift that was uh, sent to me by Pauline. Now she's a fiber friend from Saskatchewan in Canada and she's gifted me uh, a card as well as some treats that she made up. And when I emailed with Pauline, she said that she picked up this handmade card at a, uh, I believe she said it was in a craft store somewhere she picked it up. And uh, I loved it, I love it. It says, Friend to friend on the front, and I'll read the cheery note. It says, to Gary, enjoy your mug rug. Happy knitting, Pauline. Well, these are the great mug rugs that she has made. You can see a theme going on here with uh, the two that she's quilted up for me. Wonderful craftsmanship here. Just a delight. Bees. inappropriate bee type colors like honey and black, yellows, beehives. That's upside down, sorry about that. And honey cones. 
So one for me, one for Chad, and large enough to, you know, rest a, a, a nice mug on with maybe a, a little pot of tea, or if uh, we wanna share a saucer of cookies, plenty of room for that to protect the table. Absolutely love that, that'll get a lot of use. Thank you, Pauline. And a beautiful story. I won't share that because uh, it's so touching. Thank you so much, Pauline, for the story. The next thing that I have is a happy mail from, make sure that there's no <laughs> addresses showing, happy mail from Tracy, and she's a fiber friend that is from California in the United States. And she has sent me a beautiful card and gifted me, oh, wonderful things. Now I've read the card and uh, I won't share the comments, but she's leaving it up to me to uh, use, I give a good, there's another mail drop there. Uh, she's, she's given me the opportunity to give this new yarn or yarn that she won't use a good home or to gift it forward to someone who will use it as well, which will bring me to the next topic after I showcase what Tracy has sent. I absolutely love these sayings as well. It's a coaster with two sayings on them. There's this one here that uh, says, the simple things are also the most extraordinary things and only the wise can see them. That's by Paulo Colho. And on the other side, it is don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. Robert Louis Stevenson. So absolutely love those sayings. Thank you. Uh, so what has Tracy put in here? She has put some knit picks that she won't use. So this is obviously from months past and these knit picks are so squishy and lovely. Now I have not used, I've read the content of each of these knit pick samples that she's put in or skeins and I've not used fibers like this before. So I may have to keep some and I, I may want to send some off and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So this is from a brand called Aldine Walls by Knit, Pick, Knit Crate, sorry, not P Knit Picks, it's Knit Crate. I keep on getting those two mi mixed up. And it is called Calm. Now in these, in these two hanks, the color is called Pillow. And we have 80% wool, 10% silk, 10% mohair. It is a DK weight in which you get 231 yards or 211 meters, 100 grams in each skein. It says hand, hand wash gently and lay flat to dry. Uh, they are suggesting to use a 3.75 to 4.5 millimeter set of knitting needles or a 3.5 to 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. It is made in, where is it made? Oh, made in Peru and it's beautiful. I love this yarn so much. I might have to keep some of it but may have to give some forward. Now, you know I love green. And here we have in this one here is a knit crate, another month perhaps that, uh, that was in a, a box. So I don't know what kind of month it was commemorating, but this is also from Aldane Wools and it's called Sleek. And the colorway is called Unwind. The mix is 55 fine merino wool, 30 baby alpaca, 15 mulberry silk, in which you get 100 grams in each skein and it's 220 yards. Care instructions are machine wash gentle and lay flat to dry. It is a product of, doesn't say where it's made, Mm. Sorry, I can't tell you where the origin of this uh, product, where it's made, but I love the color and it's my, my favorite color called green, uh, unwind. And um, yeah, so I don't know whether I'll keep this one or not. Uh, yes, love it, love it, love it. 
The next one that uh, Tracy has added in is from obviously another knit crate month and look at that purple rose rose from rose likes crochet, uh, crochet she also likes purple and she likes making stitch markers oh my goodness that is beautiful look how rich that purple is so this one is called the the Vidalana, Vidalana, and it is Linen Jewel. Now, the colorway is called Midsummer Rose, and didn't I just say rose? <laughs> so the makeup of this one is 50% superwash merino, 30 linen, 20 silk. It's a fingering weight yarn, which gets you 400 yards or 365 meters, 100 grams. The care instructions are hand wash only and lay flat to dry, and it does not tell me where it was produced. So, I don't know, sorry about that. But those two beauties, holy smokes. Oh, this variety is a bit thicker. It looks like a five weight, like a bulky. So the other ones were uh, DK and then the last one I just showed you was fingering and now this one's a bulky yarn Lovely, oh my goodness. It feels so lovely. This is again from Aldine Wools and The colorway is called dusk and The content makeup of this is 70% superwash merino 20 kid mohair 10 silk in the skein or hank, you get 120 yards. Each each hank is 100 grams. And the care instructions are to hand wash only and lay flat to dry. This also is uh, its unknown origins, like where it was ma manufactured and made. So I'm not too sure whether Aldine Wools is a place where they make the yarn as well or whether they ship off to do it somewhere else uh, on site so I'm not too sure about I'm not don't really know too much about the yarn from Knit Crate but absolutely love that so thank you so much Tracy for all of those wonderful wonderful uh, delights now I wasn't expecting to actually hit this milestone and if I did I was thinking it was going to happen way, way down the way. Uh, so what I'm thinking of doing is putting together a box in a month uh, um, to do a giveaway to celebrate reaching the 10,000 mark. And uh, everyone is invited to join in on that when that happens. You may see a couple of the knit, knit crate yarns going in there from Tracy. And I just want to highlight that each of these yarns are going to get a great home. Uh, so yeah, super super excited and with that I think that catches you up on everything and I will The garbage truck has just picked up the glassware. So uh, I'm happy to uh, yeah celebrate this moment with everyone and Super super happy. Oh my god. I don't know what I'm saying here. I'm probably gonna edit all of this out but uh Let's uh, sit, check in on each other, perhaps maybe in a week, and I look forward to seeing you then. Stay safe, stay sane, stay healthy, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. And theme music. Here's 15 seconds of theme music. <laughs> Thank you.